Hi everyone, it's Elizabeth from Alpus Astrology at alpusastrology.com. Thanks for joining me today. So today I'm going to give you my interpretation of April 2023's astrology. But as always, you have free will to choose what you want to do during this month. All right, so April 2023 astrology. Well, the big news is that the eclipse season starts uh, this month. And uh, wow, is it a big eclipse? It's a total eclipse. And it's a new moon. It's at 29 degrees of Aries and it's 50 minutes. So we're almost at you know, 10 more minutes and it would be in Taurus. So this is our second lunation, our second new moon that is officially in Aries. So this is very unusual. So certainly for Aries and for Libra, this is an important time for you, in particular Aries. A time of definite new beginnings. So there may be for some Aries another start uh, this month in April for you and whatever new things that you need to do. So when we look at Aries, we're really talking about being independent and blazing our own individual path. So the first lunation we have is a full moon. And that full moon is in Libra, the opposite sign to Aries, on the 5th of April at 9.35 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. And it's at 16 degrees of Libra and 7 minutes. We have the Sun conjunct Chiron and uh, in, in Aries, because of course the Moon itself is going to be in the opposite sign of Libra. Uh, and that Sun and Chiron have a wide conjunction with Jupiter, which is also in Aries. And then of course the Moon opposes that. The Moon opposes the Sun at every full Moon, but because the Moon is with Chiron, there's an opposition there with Chiron too. Now the other thing we have is Mercury will be conjunct to the North Nodes of the Moon, and nicely, Venus steps in again and sextiles Neptune. The north nodes of the moon, in turn, uh, and with that Mercury, will be squaring Pluto. Now, remember that Pluto is, uh, right now, uh, zero degrees Aquarius and some minutes. And so there's a few things going on here, for sure. At all full moons, there's a culmination of some sort. There could be endings, that type of thing. But in some cases, it can be a good ending. Now, when we look at Libra, Libra is about relationships. It's also about the law or laws. Um, so just generally speaking, these two areas could be up for many people at this time. Um, when we look at the nodes involvement here, I really felt that, especially that north nodes with um, Mercury squaring Pluto, um, I felt that there was, um, you know, I actually heard a gong go off in my head, um, almost like, you know, Big Ben, when Big Ben uh, resounds and everybody can hear it. It's that type of thing, that we are going to have this resounding message about our destiny, especially as it relates to shifting power, right? Because Pluto is all about power. Uh, there could be some big revelations here as well. Um, not that that's unusual these days, um, but I like the real thing I like about this full moon is that the ruler of the full moon in Libra is, is Venus, and Venus is sextile Neptune. So to me, there's a sweet spot here as well, a sweet spot with regards to a couple of things. One, making our dreams potentially come true, being given opportunities for that. Uh, for others, um, having an opportunity to express love with a soulmate type of person. That could be up as well. But when we have the Sun conjuncting Chiron, um, I would say that, you know, wounding of some sort could be brought up where you're wounded, uh, and especially as it ties in with potentially relationships. There may be some breakups at this time, a full moon, uh, in Libra can indicate literal ending of a relationship. That could be up. But you know, for others, it could be that you're leaving something that isn't working for you, uh, a relationship that's not working. 
and maybe even others uh, are waiting to start a relationship. And this is the ending of your singledom. And more likely it's going to be the, the breakup part of it. But hey, let's include everything in this. So when we go on now to the 9th and 10th of April, we have the sun uh, in Aries conjunct Jupiter. So for me, this is a very auspicious day. Anytime you've got Jupiter conjunct the sun, and especially since it's in Aries, this is an auspicious day for good luck and movement forward on our independent path. And the picture I got in my mind was in the tarot or the tarot cards. It's the fool. If you could picture that, that's what I really saw this sun conjunct Jupiter in Aries. It's a whole new start with lots of luck, lots of expansion, um, and lots of benefits. So I guess for those folks that uh, need some good luck and movement forward, especially independent movement forward, those two days would probably be quite good for you, the 9th and 10th of April. All right, so our next lunation, I've talked a little bit about at the beginning of this video, of course, is the total new moon eclipse in Aries on the 19th of April at 9.12 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. And as I mentioned earlier, it's at 29 degrees of Aries, 50 minutes. There's 60 minutes in every degree, and so you're only 10 minutes off this potentially being in Taurus instead, but it's not. So Aries, as I mentioned at the beginning, this is a second new start. So for those folks that maybe didn't have something start at the first new moon in March, this could just change the whole game. And certainly just generally speaking, for people that want to have a new start, that want to be independent, that want to express themselves, uh, and they've not had an opportunity to do this, maybe never had an opportunity to do this. This second lunation with this total eclipse could bring something in for you. 29 degrees is a critical degree, and it talks about kind of wrapping things up in whatever sign it's in. But hey, this is a new moon, so how could that be? Well, what it says to me is, is that uh, for those folks that really have this situated somewhere in their, their own natal charts, it says by letting go of something, you are able to set yourself free on a new independent path. And that's a big message I got with this whole total eclipse, for sure. Um, the other thing I got uh, is it's only when we enter a relationship do we discover ourselves. I thought that just resonated so well with this total eclipse. Even though it's in Aries, we have it aspected by the opposite sign, which is Libra, of course. So there may be some Librans that have something to do with a partner at this time, a partnership. I'll cover all the signs in the Ascendants towards the end of this introduction. What else did I get from that? Um, I guess I got also, it's love, right, which is Venus um, and rules Libra uh, versus liberty, especially for this whole month when we bring both the full moon and the new moon in. So this whole month, again, is about relationships of some sort, but it's also about the relationship we have with ourselves. And especially this total eclipse that I just talked about, I really felt um, there was some kind of important message for some individuals that it's okay to blaze your own path. It's okay to be an individual. It's okay to sometimes flaunt the fact that you're an individual. I think as long as you take into consideration other people and respect them, you should be proud of yourself and be proud of going on your own path and not following others like a sheep. Okay, when we look at May coming up, we have another eclipse, but this time it's a full moon eclipse. It's a full moon eclipse in Scorpio, and it's at 14 Scorpio on the 5th of May. So you can think ahead 
uh, especially for those folks that have something around, say, 14 degrees of Scorpio, or the opposite sign where the sun will be, 4 degrees of Taurus. Uh, we also have a new moon in Taurus. This is not an eclipse, but it's a new moon at 28 degrees of Taurus on the 19th of May. So those are some things that will be coming up in May for you, a little preview for some folks. Now I'm going to go on to the individual signs. So, so for Pisces, uh, that full moon in Libra is going to fall in your eighth house. So for some, this could bring an end to um, a very deep, serious relationship. For others, it could bring an end to some kind of investment. It can bring an end to a mortgage. It could bring an end to you finally pay off your credit cards. Certainly that would be a good activity to use. Now, Libra represents the law, harmony, balance, that sort of thing. So it could be that you have to bring, there's a spotlight put on any of these areas I've just mentioned, and you realize you've got to bring some more balance into view here. Let's just talk, it's going to be money of some sort, potentially. And you decide to take a new course of action. And it may be that you have to use the law for whatever reason or legal means to get some balance happening here. But it could just be for some folks that you pay off the credit card, you finally pay off the mortgage. That type of thing could happen um, in a wonderful way where you feel in the end, wow, I finally ended that, that, that credit card that I've been paying off for the past three years is finally finished. And you feel more harmony and more balance in your life. Now, when we look at um, the total eclipse, new moon, that's going to happen in your second house. And so the second house, as opposed to the eighth house, the second house is the income that you earn. It's the value you put on yourself. It's your possessions. So all these areas could be up for something new for you, Pisces. Uh, I would say overall, for those Pisces that are looking for, say, a new start, uh, in the income that you earn, this could bring something right out of the blue where maybe you're offered more money in a new job. And it's especially as the, if the job applies to you blazing a new path, you being independent, uh, you being encouraged to think on your own, that type of thing um, is all going to be up here. Uh, and even you know, Pisces as a sign isn't an aggressive or an assertive sign, generally speaking. But that new job that you might get where you're earning new income may also ask you to be more assertive in what you're doing. And or maybe you're going to be more assertive, Pisces, and say, I, I need to be valued more. And I equate that value of myself with more money. And you take a whole new tack here going in and saying, I demand more money here, right? So Mars rules Aries where that eclipse is, and it's assertive. At its worst, it can be aggressive. But hey, Pisces, this could be you becoming assertive with regards to the value you place on yourself that you want other people's to place on you. And that equates to you asking for some more money. For other Pisces, I mean, you may literally be acquiring some um, much coveted uh, possessions that you've wanted maybe for a long time. Um, you know, if you look at colors in that, uh, we're looking at garnet uh, or we're looking at red. So it could be that you acquire something of value. Uh, maybe literally you buy yourself some garnet colored jewelry of some sort. And that just is something you've always wanted to do. It's a possession you've wanted, and you see the opportunities now to be able to buy something like that for yourself. But it's a pretty significant total eclipse for you with regards to the money that you make. And it's all about newness, right? New starts. So there will be some Pisces that have to let go of something in order to get this whole brand new, fabulous um, new start with regards to more income. And it could be for some Pisces that you take on another job. That could be for some Pisces too, that you want to earn more money. 
and you want to earn more money and you get an opportunities to maybe take on a new job that requires you to be very independent in uh, not only your thinking, but the actions that you take in the job. Now, you have Saturn in your sign. So that started in March and it'll stay in there for about two and a half years. So don't fear Saturn, Pisces. I would say that especially in the sign of Pisces, Saturn can bring in much, much wanted stability and structure for you. So for those Pisces that maybe have felt their life was confusing, a lot of fogginess um, and, and lack of structure, Saturn coming into your sign now for the next two and a half years can bring in much needed structure for you. Um, so don't fear that. It can also bring in structure regarding anything to do with spirituality. So Pisces as a sign is a fairly highly spiritual sign. So this might bring in uh, you literally doing things in a more systematic, um, structured way regarding spirituality. Maybe you're going to take up some kind of new um, responsibilities um, with regards to maybe learning more about spirituality and it becoming much more part of your the fabric of your life over the next two and a half years. It is the spiritual warrior for sure. So there will be some Pisces that become spiritual warriors. How awesome is that? All right, take care of yourself, Pisces. Well, that wraps up my April 2023 video. I'm sending everybody, especially at this April time period, lots of love because, of course, uh, with Libra, we uh, the Libra uh, full moon ruled by uh, Venus, it's love. And of course, with Aries, it's about taking initiative. So I'm sending lots of great new love to all my viewers and my clients. And um, I'm wishing you the very best with all your relationships in the month of April. Keep me posted on what happens to you. You know, I love to hear from you. And you will hear from me next, probably in my May video. Take care of yourself, everybody. And bye for now.